Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the June 15th, 2023 meeting of the Baltimore County Planning Board. It is now called to order. I'm Nancy Hafford, the chair of the board. I will now uh, call a roll call for our members that are present. When you hear your name, please say aye. Mr. Array? Aye. Ms. Brophy? Aye. Ms. German? Aye. Mr. Hafer? Mr. Heckman? Aye. Mr. Heinel? Mr. Hinton? Mr. Halipka? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. McGinnis? Aye. Mr. Perlow? Ms. Pinero? Aye. Mr. Warren? Aye. Ms. Wolfson? Aye. Please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Ms. Bensley, are there any changes to the tentative agendas published? No changes, Madam Chair. Thank you. In the June 9, 2023 email, you received draft minutes from the June 1st meeting. Has everyone had an opportunity to look at the minutes? Is there any corrections? If not, may I entertain a motion to accept the minutes as circulated. Motion. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. First on the agenda, we have a presentation from Mrs. Jeanette Aplazo from the Baltimore County Department of Public Works and Transportation on the Cycle 41 Water Supply and Sewage Master Plan Amendments. After Mrs. Aplazo has finished her introduction, I will call for a motion to set a public hearing on the matter. Please welcome me in joining Mrs. Aplazo. Good to see you again. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, my name is Jeanetta Plazo, and like as you said, I'm here from um, DPWT um, to um, introduce the annual water supply and sewage plan amendments for Cycle 41. We received one petition uh, this cycle, as shown on the public notice um, on the slide. The public notice was posted in the Jefferson and Daily Record, as well as on the DPWT website, uh, in compliance with the executive order governing the annual amendment process. So, um, to review the current map, map designations, uh, you'll see uh, water one, water and sewer one is existing service. Um, ones we'll talk about today is water one, sewer one, um, water three, and sewer three, which is capital facilities areas, and um, water and sewer seven, which is uh, no plan community or multi service. So Amendment 2301 is for the CP Crane Generating Station at 1021 Carroll Island Road in Middle River. The property is inside the Metropolitan District and outside of the Ertl. The current map designations are W7, S7, no plan community, or multi-use service. The petitioner is requesting changes to W1, S1, existing services in the western portion, and um, W3, S3 in the um, eastern portion or eastern areas. There is currently water and sewer service to Seneca Park Road, um, if you look on the western, um, the intersection of Carroll and Seneca Park Road. Thereafter, there's private lines that run um, onto the um, properties and, and towards the um, eastern 
portion of the um, area. And the petitioner is requesting map designation changes due to, um, um, as I quote in their um, petition, substantial changes in the character of the neighborhood and a danger to the public health, end quote. And that will conclude my um, this presentation. Yeah. Any questions from the court? Didn't we already, didn't we just address this in the last cycle or the last? We spent a lot of time, I thought. Um, right, right. And um, it was um, denied. It was, it was, it was um, crossed out of the um, last section at the, at the um, council, um, at the council. Yeah, the, the county council denied it, and so so um, the difference is in, um, instead of um, proposing the entirety of the um, property as um, existing, there's um, as W1 and S1, um, uh, they're proposing to have W1 and S1 on um, the, the, the western portion. Of, of the area. So we didn't move the hurdle last time? No, no. The hurdle is still located, and, and also in this proposal, the hurdle, um, they're not proposing to move the hurdle at all. So they're just asking for um, um, water and sewer designation change. If there are no further questions, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to set a public hearing. Be it moved that an in-person public hearing be set for Thursday, July 20th, 2023 at 5 p.m. regarding the Cycle 41 Water Supply and Sewerage Master Plan Amendments. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. As a reminder, the public hearing will be in person July 20th. The board is scheduled to discuss and vote on this matter September, at the September 7th board meeting. Next on the agenda, the board has the opportunity to further deliberate on the master plan 2030. This item was first introduced to the board on May 4th, 2023. A virtual public hearing was conducted on May 18th 2023. On June 1st, June 8th, the board had opportunities to discuss the plan and propose changes. I would now like to turn it over to the Department of Planning for additional comments and information on the board's sequestered issues. <coughs> Mr. Lafferty, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, uh, no, not at this time, Madam Chair. I'll just turn it over to Deputy Director Amy Mante to walk through the chart that's been provided to all of you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Um, so uh, we have an updated version of the chart we were working off of in the last two meetings um, as far as issues that have been brought up by the board to staff is trying to figure out, you know, edits and changes to the master plan. So I'll just start um, at the top on the first page. Um, as usual, we kind of start with the overview. There was some discussion about concerns about uh, legal issues, changes um, to linked materials in the plan. That was brought up by various planning members, uh, Brophy, Warren, Panera, and Perlo, um, requesting that we remove links from the story maps and perhaps create a source page. So I believe that was still an issue that was kind of left on the table at the last meeting, and I did not know if there was additional discussion or thoughts about that. Okay, so tonight, Nick, on the 29th, if people want to call any of these things up for a vote to be put into the new master plan, that's when we will do this on the 29th. Right now, it's just going to be an overview. Oh, sorry, I do have one question. Go ahead. So, I think this is like two parts, right? The same page. Wasn't it saying like um, there would be one reference page that would, would be, I guess, outside of county and state edit links? There'd be one page for that. 
Um, we had, I don't remember getting into that level of separation um, during the discussion last time, but if that is, you know, we're, we're here, you know, I guess to hear what your suggestions are or what it is you're looking for. Um, I think we had mentioned putting a disclaimer at the top, but I don't think that that really um, is going to satisfy the issues that are, you know, kind of present with the links, I guess, that you have. So it would probably have to be a resources page of some kind. Were you recommending actually to retain the links that are linked to government resources? I was going to say, I thought a couple of us talked about keeping the map portion of the master plan, but then anything that wasn't government related would be outside of the actual plan on like a separate reference page. That's what I thought, if anybody remembers that. We did discuss that. Right. So I think, I think, I don't know if that this can be just changed, Ms. Mandate, to like two parts, so that when we go next um, week, we can, we can. The source page with um, non-governmental links. Right. And then. And when you say governmental links, do you mean just county links? Do you mean state and federal as well? Yeah. Federal, state, and local. I just want to clarify. But all the links would remain in the document, correct, in the story book. Well, and that was part of the discussion. I think that was the I vote. thought that was the point of the disclaimer. So we talked with the Office of Law about the idea of a disclaimer, and their concern was that it, if it has been relied upon, then it's not something you can disclaim, essentially. Um, and we've approached these uh, links as being additional information that people may want to pursue, just like a footnote. In, I, I characterize it as a footnote. The law office didn't quite like the characterization. Uh, but that, that's why having a source page that actually may be outside of the plan but still be available to the public is what we're, we've now discussed. And again, that may not be the way that the board wants to proceed, but um, at least it would be separate from the actual document that's still available to the public that could then pursue further information that we relied upon and that we felt was important to retain. This issue, like all the rest, uh, will come up for a vote and people can make a motion and if it passes, it does. If it doesn't, then they can make another motion. All right, everybody satisfied right now? Okay, this is Mante. Okay, so um, the next one that um, was um, still sort of on the table for discussion, add language, clarifying the purpose of the core retrofit areas and confirming development elsewhere, elsewhere will still be permitted. There were some changes um, there. I think this came from um, board member Pinero. Um, the statement, while these core retrofit Fit areas must be the primary focus for development investment over the next decade. Development activity is permitted outside these areas and will continue based on the market and other opportunities. Um, and then there was the addition of some language about Section 324.102A indicates that development shall conform to the master plan and any adopted community plans, um, uh, striking some of the information that was added at that time to avoid confusion about the role of implementation of the master plan, but leaving the purpose of the master plan is to encourage and even incentivize growth and development within those areas deemed most suitable for retrofitting or retrofit areas. Um, and then it continues, however, striking it should be made clear. However, growth and development may occur anywhere within the URTL and in certain areas outside the URTL where zoning would permit it. Incentivizing, incentivizing growth in certain areas does not mean growth outside those areas is inconsistent with master plan 2030. nodes that were excluded from the map that would have been growth areas inside the URTL 
Does that fit into this section or is that a different section? Um, that's probably further down into the, the growth framework. Okay, then that's fine. So. This is in the very beginning, the overview, where it really just talks about the purpose of the master plan and how the master plan is used. So any other questions or comments for us or um, board member Panera? Okay. So the next one was uh, something that we already discussed, and I don't know unless anyone has anything else they want to add. Okay, so then we move down to there was an additional item put forth for the um, vision framework by board member Halupta to revise the livable built environment goal one, action one, to read as follows. Baltimore County's urban rural demarcation line was established over 50 years ago and has not been systematically reviewed for, for at least four decades. Prior to beginning work on the next master plan, the planning board and staff should conduct a comprehensive review of the urban rural demarcation line to determine whether it is still meeting the current and future needs of Baltimore County and the Baltimore region. Any questions? I would like there to be, I'd like to uh, expect there at least a study of the impact of the rural on segregation uh, of, our, of our county. Any other questions? So would you modify this or? I, would, I think it's perfect if we just add that section that, it, that we also study. As part of it, that the study would yeah. include. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Mante, no other questions? Okay. All right. Um, so the next new piece is a little bit further down the page that came from board member Heckman. Uh, revised livable built environment goal one, action eight. Um, to read the planning department and the planning board shall create a task force to study the current comprehensive zoning map process and make recommendations where the process may have opportunities for improvement to make it more effective and for easier retrofitting and easier for retrofitting communities as suggested in the growth framework. Questions? Ms. Mante. One is um, on page four. Uh, this one is still remaining. I don't believe we had discussion on it last time. From board member Panera, revise the image and growth framework place types GF5, revise the image that indicates the large quarry to include the entire 415 acres. You don't have to stand up for me, The gray yeah. ones are things we've already discussed. We've already we can discussed. we discussed those at the last meeting. So we'll, we'll vote on them at the next meeting. Why oh, do you, if you want to talk about them, we can go back. All right. So you want to go back to page three? Read that. Uh, what uh, I guess it's top of three. Zoning and economy goal three action two. Top of page three, Todd. It's yeah. the top of page three. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. And I appreciate that you added some additional information, but I had asked to have the plan sent to me, and everyone has a copy of this on the top of your desk there, um, and. Um, Mr. Lippenholtz, who was a member of the county uh, planning council or planning team for a number of years, came up with a strategy that I believe never went anywhere. Uh, it got passed by us, but I don't know what happened to it. Um, and it had growth tier um, uh, a growth tier plan one, two, and three um, that set aside the lands that are outside the Ertle, um, that a number of them that are in land preservation that would allow for some commercial use and visitation by the taxpayers of our county and taxpayers counties around us to, to get some utilization of that property, of those properties. I think it was, 
they were a little restrictive from my taste. I thought that, you know, there, there could have been some additional um, excess or, or people could access the, the properties. <laughs> In the end, I thought it, it was a good first start and a good plan. Um, we spent a lot of time during the um, research process as we met with the community, and it was a, a huge part of what we talked about. Uh, and I thought was favorably talked about by the community. So um, I would like to have some language in there that we would look to implement stages one, two, and three into the master plan. Okay, well, one, uh, stages one, two, and three are in this. Yeah, it's page three and page four. If, um, or to page five. If board members could take some time before our next meeting and go over that, because I'm sure Todd's going to ask to vote on that, right? No questions. It does say here to implement recommendations from the report. So you want to you want to be specific and say implement recommendations one, two, and three. Yeah. Well, properly. these are these are these are different levels, and it it spells out what. Um, what can be done in these particular levels. Um, I think it just gives more certainty uh, to people. There's There's been a lot of confusion as I've talked to people in the community about, well, I can build a barn, but I can't do this. Or, and this just gives a lot more, it gives a lot more specificity. Okay. Aren't any other comments, questions? I'm sure I, I would reiterate that uh, that's certainly different than what we understood Mr. Warren's request previously, which was to basically adopt the recommendations of the report. This is now calling for a different sort of land use division, if you will, and that's probably not the best word, uh, or description based upon these levels, uh, which does change then mapping and potential zoning uses. So I request that the board just take time to carefully look at these and the potential implications uh, before the vote in two weeks. Thank you for your input there, Mr. Lockwood. I, uh, I thought it was the uh, language fairly clear, but I'd be glad to, to discuss it with you further sometime and explain it. I thought it was uh, fairly fair the way it was. Further questions, Mrs. Mantay? Do you want to Was there something else on page three? Probably, um, it would probably fall under, um, I'm not sure off the top of my head just exactly where it would be. It would be within this growth framework piece. Um, the gym for the nodes, is, it, is that under GF5, 6, 4? Okay, so I just want to make a note here. So. That would be, you want a revision, um, GF4, which I think Jim has up under the methodology. And so what are you? The nodes that were excavated out, that were inside the earth, they would have had the same genesis out Oh, 
I'll, I'll defer to, to Jen to describe it, but I think what she described previously was that as we were evaluating those nodes, some of them either because of their specific location or the size were excluded. That was part of the, the adjustments that were made, and I think it was discussed with uh, Mr. Haluka early on, is that every one of them didn't quite fit what the outcomes were that we were seeking. But if you, if you, I don't have the list of the 16 nodes that should be resubmitted. If you have a specific list that you want to return to a motion, or do you have that list? But, uh, I actually, after the last meeting, I was talking with them about this, and, and they were explaining that part of the difference was some slight methodological differences. You know, again, you've got these underlying uh, measures, you know, these different ones, and the Venable people use slightly different cutoffs, and so that just changed the point values a little, um, which meant that what they may have identified as, a, you know, having enough points to be a node wouldn't necessarily have come up in the what uh, Jen did. On the other hand, I mean, since what we are saying throughout here, I mean, all these things is that basically you can still develop anywhere within the hurdle. Whether they're a node or not, I don't don't know if it makes as much of a difference. It, it seemed to me when I looked at it, some of the areas we were further included would have to be a higher Yeah. Well, and I think the other. No, I understand. And I think the other thing we were talking about is, again, I think I was explaining last week, you know, you start to the the 9,000 places are based by layering maps and cutting them into small. And some of them are just really small little. So that's not really a place per se. So um, so I was more comfortable after the discussion. But, but I just, I, not good. I understand. Yeah, mm-hmm. Thank you, Ms. Meacham. Any other questions from the board? Not Ms. Mante. Okay, so I think we're back on page four. Um, the question about the Lafarge quarry, the image, is that something that's still desired? Yes. So just for my clarity, you're talking about designating, identifying all 415 acres as special use? Right. All right. Okay, no other questions from the board, Ms. Mante. All right. So I'll skip ahead unless there's something else on um, page five or six. Anyone wishes to um, discuss? The next one was on page seven, which was related to the earlier one, um, the adjustment from uh, board member Heckman. Um, where we would make a change to the Livable Built Environment Goal 1 Action 8 um, for the CZMP, that we would make it also here in the growth framework. So study the comprehensive zoning map process, which would be a new, um, <coughs> new section. The CZMP process should be evaluated and updated. The planning department and the planning board should undertake a comprehensive study to evaluate the effectiveness and efficiency of the current CZMP process, and if appropriate, appropriate develop and evaluate options to the current CZMP process, including the timing and frequency of the process. Yes. Yes. In red. Mm -hmm. In the middle. And that would be related, um, or would parallel goal one, action eight. To be the same. Create a task force. Any questions or comments from the board? Mr. Halipka? Uh, 
Did we also, I thought we also had a discussion, and I'm not, this is fine, about, um, was there anywhere in here that, that talks about that, that we should at some point be reviewing just our zoning code? I mean, I think part of the issue that I'm having with, I think part of the issue that, that we have is even with the master plan, if the underlying zones are still pretty restrictive, then it makes it more difficult for to do things just by right and we get through the same sort of you know, then you need the PUD, et cetera, et cetera. But I thought we were having some discussion with with Howard and whatnot about at some point trying to review, not necessarily right now, but am, or am I making that up? No, that was uh, discussed. Usage around, yeah, usage, usage, usage. Yeah. There, there was a comment at the public hearing from an individual who recommended that the uh, zoning code be reviewed, revised, updated. Um, I don't remember that much discussion here about the code per se, because it seems to me that the, the whole issue of you know the master plan and CZMP and the PUDs is is in part due to the way we currently have our zoning code done. And so, you know, even if we say you know, this is my you know that even if we say that we should be re redeveloping say certain um, parcels along the main arteries, if it doesn't have the right underlying code, I mean this was I think the issue they were having up at uh, uh, Lutherville that it just becomes, and so whether, that might be another way to sort of get to the same point. And I, I just thought we might, so I, because I was thinking about this when I was talking about the URTL was whether there should be any language. I guess I'm proposing lots of planning, lots of task force for us over the next X years. But you know, in addition to these things, you know, should there be some, and I don't know how that's done. I don't know yeah, how often has the county looked at their zoning code. And, whether anyone wants to grows like topsy. I mean, it's like add something here and there. There are always ongoing changes to the text, um, and other jurisdictions have undergone a total redo. It's extremely lengthy, expensive, and complicated. Obviously. I would think, yeah. Okay. We have thirty-two different zoning categories in the county, so to evaluate those and to see which ones are still viable or should be altered to be either more flexible or. or more useful, you know, that, that would take some time. It's not to say it's not in a, not appropriate to do that. And if that's something the board feels should be done over the next decade. But that wouldn't necessarily even have to be put into the master plan. That can be discussed later. No, I mean, I, no, it would not have to be. Okay. My only question is about the, the study like the So you're talking on page seven for the CCMP process? Right. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what we had. That had came from that. planning board member Heckman. Yes. yes and they, member Howard felt very strongly that any changes would be within our body and in concert with the planning department. Well, I would also say that if we're asked to help create a task force or a study group or whatever, we would be consulting with the county executive's office uh, as to appropriate balance of external and internal people. Uh, and of course, the planning board would be a part of that, but um, that, that would be our that's how we would approach at least external participants. Yeah, if I don't want to exclude the county executive. <laughs> You're not at large, are you? 
<laughs> we'll leave that one as, as is. Yes. It's already there. It says that. It says that. Any other questions? So um, the, some of the remaining um, items that I believe um, Board Member Warren mentioned uh, that he wanted to discuss at this meeting are kind of on starting on page eight and um, through page nine. So I can start with the first one. There's some. There was a comment about the maps being vague not considering zoning, school capacity, and available infrastructure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those are the ones he asked that we um, look at today. So it's at the bottom of page eight. He will be at the next meeting, and that's when it can be discussed and voted on. The next one's on page nine. Do you feel that way about the those as well? These are that were both raised by the two of you. Um, the next one is most redevelopment is targeted for inside the beltway. However, resources for redevelopment in these areas are not present and have been turned down. And zoning has been changed many times during the last decade. Is there something you wanted to address there? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll say a little bit today and, and how I don't want to speak for hours. Um, what, what the challenge is, and this comes from the bank grant, um, we can say we want X kind of development in a certain area, but it's not. We certainly don't disagree that you need to find different strategies, and we're working on that all the time. And I, I think there's maybe more than a couple places in the report where we talk about how we increase the incentives and opportunities. Uh, the other, another element to that is that the intent at the outset was, forget the CZMP for a minute, that you start with the master plan, you do your small area plans, and then you're looking at how CIP follows that. How does the capital budget follow the goals and visions that the master plans lay out? Um, and therefore, potentially, water and sewers, water and sewage service changes, or 
basic maps, I mean, the basic services maps. So the idea is that the capital budget follows from the plan. And so if you're saying we're going to target particular nodes, then you need to make sure the capital resources, whether it's for, you know, water, sewer, roads, you know, schools, whatever it is, also matches up to those goals. So I mean, that, that has been part of the approach that we've been thinking to follow the sequence. And we, of course, we have CZMP in there, but even taking that out, the capital budget still needs to align with what we're seeking for the goals of the, and so you, you can't anticipate retrofitting with also out anticip without anticipating resources in those communities to make that happen. <clears throat> Well, that, well, they, they, we, <clears throat> well, the triple C's are part of the CZMP and that's in your hands when we get to the rezoning and whether overlays should be added in certain parts as another way of incentivizing. Um, we have the we have the commercial revitalization tax credit, which is a huge incentive in the commercial districts. Liberty Road largely is in a commercial district, as an example. Uh, Towson, other communities. So some that we have some strong incentives, whether they're in sufficient or not, I guess is part of the question. And and the county executive has charged us as long as, as well as would be due to look into other opportunities there may be for incentivizing not only housing, but potentially mixed use redevelopment. And then of course, redevelopment of commercial properties that are in decline. So I think that's, what, that's what you were, in, that's what you were intending. I got it, got it, yeah, makes sense, you're right. I wonder if as part of the master plan overall big picture process, because I, I know I had brought that up at a previous meeting, but that's more underlining and getting the lease. I wonder if possible, I'm Director Lafferty and Ms. Mante, can you within this story map, since we already have hyperlinks anyways, I don't know if it's already in there, because um, there were a lot, but is there a way to include the county incentives in the growth framework? under the incentives, especially for the redevelopment part, if that makes sense. So it links them directly to kind of like the revitalization that Director Lafferty is talking about. We do have the commercial revitalization program linked in the okay, in, yeah, in the sure. format because we mentioned there's a recommendation to look into the program because the program's, you know, over 20 years old. Right. Um, I don't remember if it's linked on the growth framework page or not. Yeah, it's, under the yeah, it's there. Yeah, and the reason I ask is because then maybe that kind of addresses what you're asking yeah, about I here. Think, I think we do have programs that I'm familiar with that they said on all my time to be on our board. So I know some of those programs and thinking if we're gonna if we're gonna do these, we're really gonna do something about these areas. We did tenants and the main but they there's really a non starter happening like that. But there there has to be major changes to be done or or some kind saying we're going to create this growth, but it's only a joke because they're going to, the council person's going to tweet it out every time. It doesn't really, we don't accomplish what we're trying to do. <coughs> okay. Yeah, we do, and we do have the link in there to your point, Ms. Brophy. And, and to your point, Mr. Warren, since you do sit on the Economic um, Development Advisory Board, I, I, I would welcome the board's it's not my purview <laughs> in our department. But I think it'd be appropriate for the board to start looking at what are appropriate incentives that really would stimulate some of the sort of redevelopment and remaking that you've described. Um, you all come from the business community and you know, have dealt with similar issues. And so what would it take? Because we've seen more and more studies come out say zoning doesn't do it. You're not able to incentivize housing just by changing new housing or different types of housing only through zoning. 
So, yes, money always helps, no question. But is that the only way to go about it? Yeah, another option is if, if, if we don't have the money, is could we look at um, expediting approvals of permits and those kind of things? Because time is money. And, you know, sometimes it takes, how long does it take to get a PUD through nowadays? You know, a year and a half, two years? Yeah. Um, if, if we could expedite, you know, those projects in these areas, um, you know, it might be more attractive to a developer, right? Increase zoning to increase density, density or to yeah. Create value. Talking about growth, are how are we anticipating in aging parts of the county uh, the retired people retiring, going to a nursing home, or going moving in with their parents, and that property becomes up for sale? We have people that are retiring, moving to Florida, the property's up for sale. Uh, we have people who, because of the pressures, they, maybe they move further north, <coughs> east, west, move out of the area, and their property is for sale. How are we able to anticipate uh, those numbers to feed into our growth projections? I turn to Ms. Meacham about growth projections. I mean, it, I mean, births and deaths are part of the overall looking at the projections. And certainly, as we know, there's a more aging population. I mean, I, I use the example all the time is if, if when my wife and I move out of our neighborhood, it's going to be a family with kids that are going to move in. Um, and so the change in communities is often driven by you know, as we age or age out of the need for a particular type of house. You know, we do know there's increasing demand for housing for uh, people 65 and older. Uh, we're not building it fast enough. Um, and that also a challenge is getting the financing. As you know, Mr. Warren could probably attest, it's tough to get financing for these multi-million dollar projects. Um, but we'd rather people move out of their home to stay in the community someplace if they could. And they're not, and, and Hopefully, they're still committed to the county and stay here if, they, if they're able to find a place to live. I think it concerns me also sometimes when we subsidize um, some housing that we're incentivizing people from other areas to move into the area, which increases the inflow of, of um, pressure on housing when we do that. I know, like, in Baltimore City has lost, what, uh, 200,000 people in the last couple decades? Or more than that, they're moving out because of crime and uh, poor schools and so on. Um, so are we incentivizing people from other areas to move in if we use subsidized housing as an example? I mean, people, people are mobile, um, and people are always looking for better opportunities, whether they're moving from Dundalk to Perry Hall or moving from Highland Town to, to Dundalk. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't know. Mr. Luke has done some work in that arena. You may have some more data. I was just wondering, part of it is also, I guess, there's the sort of within the region movement, but, you know, to the extent that the Baltimore region has a good, thriving economy, you would expect it to be attractive. I mean, that's what thriving places do. So, you know, Texas and Florida are attracting lots of people. I was just in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. It's not attracting people. It's not a good thing. Um, so, yeah, we, I think if, if we, you know, if you are having a thriving economy, you are going to be attracting people in, and you want to be able to house those people plus the people that are already here. You know, to my mind, it's always a question, do we want the region to grow or do we want the region to decline? Those are the two options. Uh, there's steady state that doesn't occur in nature. Um, and if you're going to grow, then you've got to provide resources. Thank you. 
true supply, the demand stays constant, prices will rise to a point that it's not a, not a sort of in a shortage. And my biggest concern with that is that I want a thriving workforce. I want people to be able to work their peers and to be able to provide the service that if it becomes unattainable, like it has <coughs> happened in most of the western major cities, um, that's not a community I want to live in. So, um, okay, any other questions or comments from board members? I'm just wondering, Todd, to get back to your comment and, and Howard's comment. Is there, should we suggest stronger language in somewhere, I'm not sure where, but that says um, the county is committed to finding ways, either financial incentives or otherwise, to direct, to encourage growth in these areas. And those ways may include whatever, whatever we come up with. But a strong statement to that effect, and I'm not sure there is that anywhere in here currently. My, my only, I love that, but my only concern is that, again, it goes back to our, our cycle system. We can approve anything we want. Once the council gets it, they take it out. You know, I, I agree we should probably put some stronger language. So, yes, I support that, but, but without some kind of overlay or, or you know, some, I think it should be even more. I think there's a lot of power. just a challenge. Yeah. I would support incentivizing as long as it was concentrated in the retrofitted areas. Well, I think that's, that's what we're trying to get to, yeah. I mean, I could try to draft something. I would love that. And run it by you. I, Amy, if you could tell me where the appropriate place would be to insert something like that. And maybe I could use your help on that, too. But. Then, um, then Amy can send it out to the rest of the board. Thank you, Mr. Heckman, for offering to do that. Okay, any other questions or comments? If none, we'll move on. The board will vote on the master plan 2030. Is Oh, are we done, Ms. Manti? Um, I'm sorry, I apologize. That's all right. There were three other from um, board members Perla and Warren. Do you still want to go through those? The next on one. Page nine. The next one is the plan has no vision on how to create needed affordable middle priced housing for citizens of our county. That's, that's what I thought. I just thought we, that's what I thought. I think we just did that. All right. And also, I'd like just to additionally point out that there is a link to a county study of affordable housing called the Affordable Housing Work Group report. And uh, many of the housing incentive issues, your point, Mr. Heckman, about uh, what do we need to do as far as expediting the, you know, the processing of plans or of you know, permit review or waiving fees, perhaps. I mean, those are all kind of incentives that also not only reduce time, but also could reduce the cost. I'm uh, sorry, that was the Affordable, the affordable housing. housing Work Group. It's a report of the Affordable Housing Work Group, which is linked in the plan. Got it. Mr. Lippe? I, I just want to raise that. I mean, this was the a question comment that I had as well, though, is that one of the discrepancies that I see is that a lot of the places that we've identified as nodes for retrofitting aren't necessarily the places that the Affordable Housing Task Force identified as where we want to put affordable housing in terms of giving opportunity areas. And so that becomes, Kathy, the sort of the, the, the clash between we want to, you know, on the one hand, we want to provide people opportunities to move to good neighborhoods, but the good neighborhoods aren't necessarily the places that need the retrofitting. And so if we only put the affordable housing in the retrofitting, you're just re continuing to segregate. The I thought that the point of this plan was to make the... Um, 
retrofitted areas desirable and good neighborhoods. I thought that was the whole point of the plan. I agree. It's an important part of the plan, but it doesn't solve the lawsuit issue that the county has. That it's not. I, I think there is a currently, and you're right, Ms. Wilson, and that is the goal and the intent is to strengthen these areas so they become even more appealing and therefore opportunity areas. But currently, many of the opportunity areas exclude, for instance, Liberty Road, which is identified for retrofit. Uh, so it doesn't help us meet our voluntary compliance agreement with HUD. Um, so that's that's part of that conflict that we still have to work through because, and actually have had conversations with HUD about changing some of the zip codes because population has shifted since 2016. And so there's different opportunity areas. But I think that's something we constantly are, are It's very, very frustrating for those residents on Liberty Road that invest in their homes and their businesses. And yet we continue to feel um, um, neglected, our, our, you know, and then we hear our neighborhood won't support high-end housing. You've said it yourself, Todd. You know, so what? what is the hammer that the county has to encourage um, quality housing and development on Liberty Road if we don't apply it in the master plan. I don't think any of us said that we don't want to apply it. Well, it's, it's, it sounds like it's been, you, you, you keep encouraging new development instead of investing in these communities. I, I want every human being to have an opportunity to live in Randallstown. Well, apparently not a lot of people want to live in Randallstown. There's a lot of people. Any other questions or comments? I think there's a lot to chew over before our next meeting. And uh, the board uh, vote on the master plan is tentatively scheduled for our next meeting on June 29th. Okay, Ms. Bensley will now fill us in on major actions of the June 8th, 2023 Landmark Preservation Commission meeting. Ms. Bensley. Thank you, Madam Chair. At their June 8th, 2023 meeting, the Landmarks Preservation Commission voted to issue three certificates of appropriateness to the following properties. The Burton property located at 4609 Prospect Avenue in Reisterstown, the Smith property located at 601 Cliveton Road in Pikesville, and the Robinson Brown property located at 19 Chatsworth Avenue in Glendon. And that concludes the report. Thank you, Ms. Mensley. Now, will you fill us in on legislation recently passed by the County Council following our last meeting? Thank you. Bill 1923, 2023 basic services maps for the purpose of repealing the basic services sewerage map, the basic services water supply map, and the basic services transportation map, and adopting a new basic services sewerage map, a new basic services water supply map, and a new basic services transportation map. Bill 2723, Annual Budget and Appropriate Ordinance of Baltimore County to adopt the county budget consisting of the current expense budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2024, the capital budget for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2024, and the capital improvement program for the fiscal years ending June 30th, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, and to appropriate funds for all program expenditures for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024.
Bill 3623 cannabis facilities for the purpose of modifying existing provisions to the county code and zoning regulations concerning medical cannabis facilities as to make those provisions equally applicable to adult use cannabis facilities, updating county law to account for statewide legis legis legalization of adult <coughs> use cannabis and generally relating to cannabis facilities. Resolution 10-23, Establishing the Owings Mills Commercial Revitalization District, a resolution of the Baltimore County Council to establish the Owings Mills Commercial Revitalization District. The County Council has identified two areas of land as shown on the map identified as Exhibit A and finds it an appropriate time to establish a CRD in the area of Owings Mills. Areas include a, sub, a section of Red Run Boulevard between Owings Mills Boulevard and Cherry Hill Court, and a section of Reisterstown Road between Painters Mill Road and Dolefield Boulevard. Resolution 1323, Planning Board Short-Term Rentals, a resolution of the Baltimore County Council requesting the Baltimore County Planning Board conduct a review of the growing trend and proliferation of short-term rentals in the county and consider recommendations for possible legislation to integrate this short-term guest housing option into the county's laws, regulations, and policies for such use. The re review should include examining the geographic areas where these properties are known to exist in the county and also reviewing the laws, regulations, and policies of other similar jurisdictions related to this use. The planning board is requested to review to report its findings and recommendations to the County Council on or before October 1, 2023. Resolution 1423, Planning Board EV Charging Stations, a resolution of the Baltimore County Council requesting that the Baltimore County Planning Board conduct a review of public electric vehicle charging stations and consider recommendations for possible <coughs> legislation to integrate this relatively new technology as permitted use in the Baltimore County Zoning Regulations. The review should include examining the laws, regulations, policies, and best practices of other similar jurisdictions regarding the zoning, siting, and permitting of public EV charging stations. The Planning Board is requested to report its findings and recommendations to the County Council on or before October 1, 2023. Resolution 1523, revocation of approval of resolution and PUD application BC Middle River Park. A resolution of the Baltimore County Council to revoke approval of a resolution and application for a proposed plan unit development in accordance with county law. And finally, resolution 1723 updates to the Patapsco Granite Area Community Plan, a resolution of the Baltimore County Council requesting the Baltimore County Department of Planning to acknowledge the and allow the Greater Patapsco Community Association, Inc. to update the Patapsco Granite Area Community Plan in conjunction with the Baltimore Baltimore County Department of Planning, and that concludes the report. Thank you again, Ms. Bensley. This is the... Yeah. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> we all heard. <laughs> I think we're strapped right now. <laughs> well... Well, thank you guys. You're doing the heavy lifting. We know. And you too over there, Miss Meacham. <laughs> well, this is the conclusion of our agenda. As a reminder, our next meeting will be on Thursday, June 29th at 4 p.m. The meeting will be virtual. This will accommodate some of our board members that are not going to be in the area that night. I'm asking you to please come very prepared for a lot of discussion and voting. So do I have a motion to adjourn the board meeting? Thank you. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. And if anybody says no, <laughs> we're going to talk. <laughs>